So then, what has been going on in the world of the fishing bloggers? Well, quite a lot, if I'm honest. Which is why there's not been a lot of content going out. So, obviously, through lockdown, there were a lot of people smashing out videos on YouTube. Um, it was relentless. Um, not surprised, obviously a lot of people were sort of furloughed, some people were just not working, so we're at home, I couldn't go anywhere, I had plenty of time to edit. Uh, me and Hugh on the other hand, um, we both worked for the emergency services, we were getting absolutely battered relentlessly every day at work. Um, I actually worked more in those few months of lockdown, or that period of lockdown, um, than I probably have um, previously. Uh, I was doing load of overtime. Um, we had quite a few people that were off because they've been confirmed with COVID. We had a lot of vulnerable, well, what were classed as vulnerable people that officially couldn't work and were signed off for like the 12 week period. Um, so it meant that there were a lot of us uh, doing serious amounts of overtime, um, which did affect um, being able to do much, to be fair. I was essentially going to work, coming home and sleeping. Um, so. Yeah, I didn't really have the same same free time as a lot of the other channels out there probably did. So um, it meant that the content wise, um, it was very lacking. Um, going forward though, um, I've actually got some really big news. Um, it's something I've kept very close to myself. I haven't really told anyone. I don't tend to talk about my personal life too much. But basically the end of last year, um, I got the wicked news from the missus that um, we were expecting a little one. So. Um, yeah, she was. Uh, she told me she was pregnant. Um, I don't ever really talk about her that much, if I'm honest. But um, we've actually been together for 13 years. Um, she's stood by me through all the time that I go out fishing. Um, to be fair, she's absolutely brilliant. Um, she knows that it means a lot to me getting out of the bank. I'm definitely a different person if I don't get my fishing fix. Um, so she's usually pretty, pretty happy to let me go out um, as often as I try. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, we're now expecting a little one, and as it stands today, um, she's actually two days overdue. Um, so at any point, I've got my phone on hand, um, at any point I could get a call to say that I need to get home. So she has been obviously still letting me get out on little trips. Um, there's not a lot really to do at the moment until, you know, um, it happens. So um, I've still been getting out, but I've been staying very local and um yeah not trying to uh not trying to be too far away so i can get back up as if i do get a call so um i'm only out for a short morning at the moment anyway so i'm only going to be here for a couple of hours and i'll be going back home but you never know um she could call me at any time but um anyway because of that it's obviously going to affect the channel i'm not going to have as much free time she is very good she lets me go out as much as she can but having a little one obviously i've got a responsibility with that um as i'm sure most of you will know um, so it's definitely not going to have as much bank time and it's not, not as much time to edit either. So because of that I'm potentially going to change the way that I do these videos. And I might start doing a little bit more of a diary piece and just sort of going over um, what we've been up to and what we've done and trying to combine sessions into, into more like one video so it saves me having to sort of individually edit because I don't know what you guys know about editing um, but a video can take a long time to edit. Um, and it takes a lot of time sat down, concentrating, tinkering around, playing around with things, trying to make things flow um, so that they're watchable. So I think with like a more of a diary style, it's a bit more raw, it's a bit less editing. Um, so it means I'll probably be able to get it done a bit quicker. It'll probably only be short term until I get into a flow and, and realize what kind of time I got. But um, yeah, that's definitely probably gonna be the way I'm gonna do it. Um, anyway, so what have we been doing? Well. Just after lockdown, I went to Plantation, did a short trip on there, had a really good time. Um, I did like half a day, well, three quarters of a day. I uh, got there early morning. Um, there were f there were a few guys on the lake. Um, I noticed a lot of them were just lobbing it into the middle, fishing a bit of boily. Um, I decided to fish off the barrow, stay mo mobile, um, move around, and just look for signs of fish. I ended up having five fish, um, and this is at the main carp, Specie Lake. Angry little Coleman. Up an absolute battle royale, couldn't believe it, really went for it. Couldn't get in the net, thought it was going to be like three times the size. Another one on the solid bag, solid bag of um, DNA cray mix with a PB wafter, standard tactics, my go to confident rig, any sort of new venue I go to. 
Uh, the biggest one was a um, one of the 18 fish actually, it was a fish called a ghosty common. Right, check that out. 200 pound, two ounce, quite a margin, some solid bag. Seen some fish feed under a tree. Happy days. First 20 out of plantation. It's got a lovely sort of coy, ghosty sort of coloration to it. Quite unusual, really nice fish. Put up a brilliant fight. Happy days. Solid bag tactics, working a dream. Normally it's like low to mid 20, I had it scraper 20 because it was down after spawning, but it was actually in lovely condition. Wicked fish, beautiful fish, um, really enjoyed it. And a few other doubles as well to back that up. So um, yeah, it turned out to be a really nice trip. Um, myself and Hugh then went up to um, the, new, uh, the syndicate. We're back on a bank, I'm back up in Oxford, back on the embryo syndicate, Phil's Lake, and it's been a long time since we've been here. So I'm really happy to be back on a bank. Um, yeah, absolutely buzzing to be on here. I've missed the place big time. Um, I haven't been here since doing my spring campaign 2019. There's um, a few reasons why, of which I, I will go into a bit later in the video. But we are back on the bank, and um, yeah, I'm only doing maybe 36 hours. Hugh's doing about 48. So hopefully in that time we can put a few fish in the net, get a few fish for the camera, and hopefully have a nice chilled out relaxed sesh. So. Uh, Anyway, I'm going to crack on, get some rods out, and uh, let's see if we can put a few on the bank. So we um, haven't been there for a long time. Um, I'm gonna actually let Hugh give you a bit of a lowdown on that in a second. Basically, we went up there. Um, I did 24 hours, Hugh did 48, I think it was. Um, in the end, we ended up having five carp and three tench. Um, I had a better one at 26. I also had another double. Um, lovely fish, fought really well. Um, we were fit, I, I was fishing. <clears throat> Excuse me, I was fishing to um, a hard spot amongst some weed about 80 yards, just trickling in S7 and SLK, letting it off doing. Oh, hello, some big liner then. Um, yeah, I was just trickling in S7 and SLK, letting it off doing. Had the matching pellet in there, absolutely laced it, for the, um, covered it and cased him, um, and so it spotted that out onto, um, onto this spot. Kept it going, letting it off doing, and yeah, I ended up having two fish um, and a tench. Um, tench was seven pounds, biggest fish was 26. Hugh did a sim similar thing. Um, I was fishing wafters on like bottom bait style rigs. He was fishing Ronnie's, um, but same sort of baiting approach, same sort of a, a tactic really. Um, and he ended up having uh, three carp. I think he had two 18s and another one a little bit smaller. Um, but he had two PB tench. Um, so we had one which was six pound plus, which was his PB. And then the day after, unfortunately I wasn't there, I didn't get to see it. But he had an absolute banger of a tench, um, nine pound plus. Um, it very, I think it was very close to my PB to be fair. Um, it's a really nice fish. I wish I was there to see it because when they're that size, they are banging. Um, and to be honest, I think he was probably happy, happier catching that than he was the other three carp. So yeah, fair play to him, wicked session. Um, we really enjoyed getting back up there and before um, I forget, I'm going to now let Hugh just give you an update. It is a bit of an intense update, um, it's probably five minute long, but it will give you an idea of what's been going on and why we haven't been up there for so long. So I'll hand you over to Hugh, um, have a listen to this. Right then, I thought I'd just take a little bit of time to explain why we haven't been up fields for so long. Um, if you remember, right back, uh, about a year ago now, um, we did quite a big campaign up here last spring. Um, Sean in particular put quite a bit of time in and um, we both set the target of catching a 30 out of here and um, I achieved it and then a week later um, Sean managed to do the same. Yeah, shoulders on that, new UK PB. Oh, absolute banger. I'm loving the S7 in here. I see it go. Go on in, big girl. Look at that. Come on, you gotta fight. You gotta fight. Ooh. Get me. Oh. I've 
waited so long for that. What a banger. <laughs> so, um, it feels like a huge amount of time, I suppose a year is a long time since we've managed to get back up here. Uh, and that's due to a series of reasons out of our control really. And um, I thought I'd just talk you through what they, why, they, why it's happened and um, where we're at now. So I've actually wrote some notes because so much has happened in that year for the lake um, and it might need a little reminder. So um, like I say, going back to last spring then, um, Embryo employed the weed cutter to come in it was getting quite severe and um, they obviously needed to do something about it. So yeah, the weed cutter come in for a couple of weeks and um, cleared a couple of tons worth of weed. Um, and then also they brought in some divers because out in the middle there were some old weed cage beds um, that were savage snags. And um, yeah, once again, they needed going. So um, yeah, divers came in, removed all of that at the same time as the weed cutting. And as you could probably expect, um, that then created this massive algae bloom, um, which not the fish on its head to be honest um, for probably maybe a month maybe six weeks something like that so yeah that, that obviously during that time we stayed away um, our fishing time is so precious that really uh, we couldn't afford to come up here in the hope that they switched on at some point while we we're here so uh, that was what first happened and then we had some devastating news that um, the lake had been confirmed uh, to have KHV after a few fish were found um, washed up in the, in the margins as such and um, as you can imagine it was a massive blow um, not only to us as members but obviously also to all the bailiffs that put in so much work and Embryo um, as a sort of um, a charity organisation trying to give something back to these lakes but that obviously meant the lake was completely shut um, so even the bailiffs couldn't um, come and walk around I was, I was told yesterday and yeah, it was a massive, devastating blow, um, but Embryo have really bounced back from it, and I, I t do take my hat off to them. Um, they've put in dip tanks now, um, the water, obviously it's co constantly monitored, and it's only improving, and um, yeah, to be fair to them, they've bounced back from it so, so well, and from the fish we've seen today, the five fish we've had so far at least, um, they're all being in immaculate health, no problems on the map, no problems during the battle, that's for certain. And um, yeah, I'm certain this place is going to bounce back from it. Unfortunately, we did lose one of the big girls, um, one of our target fish, but um, there is still another large resident that's going to got to be pushing £40 pounds soon. Um, and a load of these 30s are still piling on the weight, or at least haven't dropped. So that's really positive going forward. And um, yeah, the fire is still lit, put it like that. Um, so moving on from then, the lake was due to reopen, as you can imagine, a load of leave requests went into work and, and then um, coronavirus. Now I ain't going to take too long because I'm sure, like me, you're bored of hearing about it. Um, it's affected our lives and the least of the worries was fishing, but yes, um, coronavirus came around once again, obviously, rightly so, lake went into lockdown like we all did and um, we're shut until um, about six weeks ago. So once again, great news came out. Um, you know, with social distancing, the lake can reopen. Happy days, we can all go fishing again. Once again, leave requests went in and uh, yeah, fish started spawning. So um, they know what's going on, don't they, I reckon. Uh, they knew we were eager to get down there and thought, let's have, a, let's have a bit of fun with them. So yeah, again, um, I'll take my hat off to Embryo. They've now got the policy where they'll shut the lake for four weeks, give them plenty of chance to not only get a lot of the spawning out of the way, um, but also recover. And, and that's something that's really important um, as anglers and we should respect. So yeah, although it was absolutely um, a bit heart-wrenching, um, at the same time, fully support them in what they've done. And um, just to reiterate really, from the fish we've seen on the bank, um, they're all in such good condition. All, any spawning um, sores are sort of healing on their own and with a little bit of um, carp care um, they're going back fighting fit so yeah that's basically where we are up to now um, the lake reopened on Friday we got back here obviously we've got a weekday ticket so we got up here on the Monday morning and um, yeah done the done the two nights for me and the, the one night for Sean so just thought we'd give you a little bit of an update on why we've not been up here for so long. It is um, a plan of ours to be up here as much as we can this year because there's just something about this place. I, I had 
butterflies in my stomach like the first time I drove down the track um, on Monday and that's what fishing should make you feel like so yeah appreciate this as I'm probably waffling on a bit now but we want to just give you some details about what's happened yes the devastating news about KHV and, and how much that you know did wound us but actually you know lakes can recover from it it's not just write them off and um, yeah hats off to Embryo and all of their staff and bailiffs for what they've done and how they reacted and um, yeah fingers crossed going forward nothing but chunks on the map so yeah there you go um little bit frustrating um but unfortunately things well say unfortunately fortunately things are back where they should be and the place is on the up now and um i will mention as well um we've actually got another embryo ticket um there's uh two more lakes which have um just been released and um, we've had our names down on the waiting list for, for probably two years um and they've finally come up and um they're going to be opening um, one's called Baker's and the other one's called Homefield, I think. Um, the two lakes next to each other, they're both part of the same syndicate, um, but we've decided to join there. Um, they're smaller fish, smaller lakes, um, but it's just somewhere else that we can go. Um, we're getting a little bit fed up with day ticket fishing, to be honest. Um, it's so busy nowadays, it's very frustrating. We just love the peace and quiet. And I know now we're having a, a little one, um, my fishing's gonna be so precious. Uh, when I'm on the bank I just want to enjoy it um, so I've decided to, to put our names down for that and actually there's also another place coming up soon um, which is a little bit different and I think it's going to be a bit of a special place um, like Phil's is an incredible lake, Cables next door is an incredible lake and these two other lakes I'm sure will end up turning out to be brilliant fisheries but this other place looks absolutely brilliant, um, really does so I've got my name down for it um, I don't know when it's going to become available. Um, apparently it's got a stock of about 150 original fish already up to mid 30s. So it sounds very interesting. Um, it's a lot bigger, I think it's about 30 acres. Um, but yeah, looking forward to that. So hopefully that will come up at some point. Um, just going to check my notes so I know what I'm covering. Uh, so we've done plantation fields. Uh, just before Phil's, um, on the way up actually, I did a short overnighter in Surrey um, for Tench. Actually specifically targeted the Tench with a 1.75 pound scopes. Um, I was fishing um, some 8mm SLK and S7, um, matching pellet, just sort of scattering it little and often um, over a couple of rods in the margin. I ended up having three bites, um, only landed two of them, one of them actually dropped off, it caught around the other rod. Um, but I ended up having two fish, and the biggest one I think was just shy of seven, so that was really nice. Um, really enjoyable, it was like a real quick overnighter. I went up, I got it just on dark, dropped in some rods after seeing a couple of tent show, um, had a bit of food, had a beer. Um, I think I got my head down and then got woken up twice in the night packed up the kit in the first thing in the morning and then shot off up to Phil so it's a nice little session um, yeah really enjoyed it um, other than that though obviously we've been doing a lot of urban bank stuff um, we've been trying to get some content for the concrete jungles part two which will be out at some point this year um, so we've been doing a lot of stuff like that um, we've also uh, been fishing or started a little bit of a campaign on a local place so a place called Hunt Street which is actually in the village of Hunt Street just just outside of Bristol it's a wicked little fishery. Um, the lake we've been targeting is the main lake. Uh, it's about five acres. It's estimated to have about 90 to 100 fish, I think. Um, and again, it's estimated, I think, to have between 15 and 30, 30s in there. Um, there's also, um, I think, four fish that potentially go 40 pound now. I know there's two fish that definitely go 40. Um, one of them's a big fish called Blush. There's another fish called Jaffa, I think, but that was a bit down in weight um, when it got caught a few weeks back. And then there's a fish that got caught last week at 40 pound in ounces. I think there's another one that goes close. So, you know, we're basically targeting it for the 40s. Um, we really want to catch a 40 from Bristol. I think it'd be really cool to have that as a first 40. There's a load of other big fish in there as well. Um, I was actually very fortunate in that. Um, I've been doing very short sessions like mornings and evenings. And I went there one evening, um, seen some fish, nothing ended up happening went back the following day and um, 
To be fair, I thought my chance was blown, so I, I dropped on where the fish were the day before. The fish was clearly still there, there's a bit of fizzing going on, definitely signs of fish in the zone, getting a few liners. And then the day went on, it got to about half 11, and I was just like, it's not gonna happen. And I was getting to that point thinking, I've got to go to work in a minute, um, I'm gonna have to pack down. And then one of the rods just absolutely went, just melted off. Um, and ended up having a really nice one, I ended up having a 32. So I was really happy about that. Um, I'm not going to tell you any more about that um, that place going forward. Um, that will end up being a campaign as well. Um, we'll release that as a campaign video at some point and just combine everything that's been going on into one. But we have been doing a bit of time on there. It's a very tricky lake, but I think going forward we're probably going to... I think we're going to do alright to be honest. Additional to that, um, we've actually been fishing a few other places um, just for runs. Um, just to go and get you know a few bites now and then um, again just short trips a few hours here and there Double World Cup for you Three days. So there's my two Sat in there sulking just need to sort them out and let them go and then we come over here She's got two sat in the net sulk in there. Happy days, nice bit of fishing. Can't beat that for a couple of hours. We've been absolutely bagging up, to be honest, I'm not gonna lie. Um, we've had plenty of fish out of these places. Been here about five minutes with rods in the water. Got one already. Lovely little fish. Nice little scrap. Caught an 18 mil S7 wafter. Very angry, he's got a very distinctive gill plate there. He's obviously got a bit of damage. Don't know if that's natural. I hope it's natural, I hope someone hasn't caused that. Yeah, another fish, happy day. Right, well, it's been about 10 minutes. Looks like a little part lake common. Well, about five or six pound. As you can see, little PB wafter. Absolutely nailed on a solid bag. I'm not going to get her out, so let go. Oh, is that the other one? Oh, jeez, the other one's going. Oh, it's going on. It's ridiculous. Rods have been in about 10, one after the other. Solid bags, one on a PB, one on a Fruity Licious, and some Cray mix in the bag. Job done, happy days. Another one on the S7. Right, Ollie's got an absolute unit, he's had a bite. Oh. Not his intended quarry. What an absolute chunk. That's what you came for. It's definitely the downside of uh, Park Lake, so we've got a lot of bream in. Well, that one's going. What's that noise? Oh, that one's going as well. Double bubble, what is that about? Um, mostly just doubles, like low to mid doubles. Um, we haven't had much bigger than that really, but it's been really good fun. And a lot of it's such simple fishing. Um, like, um, what I've been doing a lot of bigger bait fishing lately, so I, I don't know, I, a while ago I switched to eight, eight mil and 12 mil, so I spotted a lot. But recently I've been using a lot more sort of 18s, 22s, 20s. Um, it's been working really well on some of these places because I don't think they see it very very often and because of that my rigs have changed slightly so instead of using um, bronnies and stuff like that which I do like using I've been going to more sort of wafters um, sort of straight bottom bait rigs and I've been fishing like a D-rig um, 
on like some tungsten loaded with a big size four and um, D-rig style with like a double wafter so it's really really critically balanced um, but that's actually been doing me quite a few fish so but anyway um, I'm not going to go in anymore it's been a long enough video already but um, yeah this is going to be the way going forward I'm going to do some sort of diary style videos probably going to be a lot better than this one this is just to try and get something done um, but anyway um, I think that rod's going to go at some point so I had a couple of liners on it and a fish not long rolled over the top of it so it's looking pretty good for a bite that um, but anyway hope you like this video um, if you want to see anything or know anything or ask any more questions or if you think it's a terrible idea doing a diary doing a diary piece then let us know but um, anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you're getting out on the bank, be lucky, and we'll see you again soon. In the next episode, I head down to Somerset to go on the Mega Durley Reservoir. We'll have a great session. You do not want to miss out on that one. Hugh heads up to Abingdon, where he actually manages to put on a fish on the bank out of our new syndicate. Plenty of other stuff going on, so hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. If you're getting out, be lucky. We'll see you soon.